Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm in Westchester County, just north of New York City, and I'll be taking a flight out of the Westchester County Airport. Today I'll be flying to Atlanta on Delta Airlines, operated by Endeavor Air, on a CRJ 900. Flexure 380, turn right, taxiway, okay. echo, contact ground point 82. So we're going to make Flexure 380, right, turn right, right on Flexure, it's approved, contact ground point 82. Flexure 380, Flexure 380. 6 Bravo Alpha, wind 330, 11, runway 34, clear for takeoff. Clear on 34, clear for takeoff. Flexure 3, wind 330, 12, runway 34, clear land. 34, clear land, this is a flight. 1231, Papa Pasha, West, Chester, Roger, hold short, runway 34, traffic, will land. Westchester County Airport is very busy on a daily basis. Most people are Westchester County Airport is very big on general aviation flights. There are a lot of FBOs at the airport and you've got a lot of small airplanes as well as larger airplanes flying privately to many destinations. There is a commercial airline terminal at Westchester County Airport and I'll be flying out of that terminal today. The airport is interesting because it's in a very noise sensitive area. It's right on the border between Westchester County and Fairfield County in Connecticut. There are many homes in the area so the departure and arrival procedure into and out of the airport are made to adjust to the surrounding environment. Westchester County Airport is easy to get to from New York and Connecticut and is situated near some major roads. The nearest largest city is White Plains, New York, and the airport itself has property in the towns of North Castle, Harrison, and the village of Rybrook. The eastern edge of the airport borders Fairfield County in Connecticut. The airport is in a suburban environment quite different from the hustle and bustle of New York City. The roads that lead to the airport are tree-lined and you really don't know that there's an airport here until you get to it. Today, I have approached the airport from off of Route 684 and as we get closer to the airport, we pass by a Lockheed T-33 Shooting Star which memorializes the New York Air National Guard which had a unit based here until the 1980s. After that, we see a large hangar for NetJets. Before entering the terminal, there's a cell phone waiting area, which I'm going to make a quick pit stop in. Well, on my way to the terminal, I noticed this sign here. I pulled into the cell phone waiting lot, which gives you flight information for flights that are arriving into Westchester County Airport. This is a heavy GA, or General Aviation Airport, with many corporate aircraft based here. But we're going to continue on down the road to the airline terminal, which was built in 1995 and has just six gates. Once we get inside, I'll take you around the three-story building and talk about the upcoming flight a bit before we go to the gate area. I'm about to get out of the car, don my mask as required, and go into the terminal. All right, I've arrived at HPN Airport. And I actually feel like I'm really far away from New York City, even though I'm very close. This is a very small terminal. So come inside with me as I get ready to fly on the CRJ 900 down to Atlanta. The check-in area is on the right side of the terminal. The airlines that operate out of HPN at the time of this video are American, Cape Air, Delta, Elite Airways, JetBlue, United, and Tradewind for charters. I'm flying on Delta today. Delta actually suspended service to HPN during part of the COVID-19 pandemic, but it's back now. Delta's two destinations are its hubs of Detroit and Atlanta. Other airlines provide service to their hubs, small airports in the Northeast, and many cities in Florida. The airport check-in process was extremely efficient with no crowding or wait times. All right, I dropped off one bag. I actually went to the ticket counter and they asked me to bring the bag over to drop-off area, and I'm all set. It's a really lovely airport to fly out of. This airport has got an observation lounge, so of course, before I go through TSA, I'm gonna go there. Why don't more airports have observation lounges? This excites me more than going to any airline club. Unless, of course, the club has a commanding view of the runways. Let's see what this airport has to offer. Observation lounge. Nice. Wow, some JetBlue aircraft with runway 1634 in full view. I think I'm going to spend some time up here. 
there are some historical images of the airport too. I love how I can see this JetBlue A320 in its entirety, and across the runway there is an Avello 737. That's a brand new airline. I think it's on a charter flight. There's quite a lot to see up here. Once we get out there today, I'll be incorporating air traffic control into this video and describing the lingo that everyone uses. I am the only person in the observation lounge, so it is pretty neat up here. I am enjoying the fact that I have these amazing views with no one around me. Now, many of the passengers after TSA, they go to a central area called a holding area that gives access to all the gates. And that area is actually right down over there. You can see it's pretty crowded, but why go there when you can be up here? Now, quite often, I get asked by many of you how I know so much about aviation. Well, I've been studying the airspace in the New York City area for many, many years, but there are a lot of great resources that are available on the internet for free so that you can learn more about your flight path. For example, today I'm flying out of Westchester County Airport. There's a website or many websites out there that give you information about the runway configuration as well as diagrams indicating what the flight paths are. Now I mentioned at the beginning of this video today that we're in a very noise sensitive area. So I took a look at the departure procedures out of Westchester Airport and I can see the turns that are necessary to be made after departure. So I'm able to determine the departure runway simply by looking out the window. They're using the long runway today, runway 1634, and they're using it in the direction of runway 34. The departure procedure shows a left turn to be made after passing 1,000 feet after takeoff, so I know what to expect after taking off on runway 34. That's exactly what this A320 and my flight are going to do after takeoff today. Once we take off, the New York Departure Controller is going to provide us headings and altitudes to climb to to get to our initial departure fix out of the New York area. Today, our departure fix is going to be Lana. Sound familiar? If so, then you watch my channel with great attention. In my video on September 26, 2021, I talk about a flight I'm about to take from LaGuardia, also to Atlanta, where the initial fix is also Lana. The airports in the New York area share many of the same departure fixes. Lana is located in Everettstown, New Jersey in Hunterdon County. After Lana, we will follow the jet routes while talking to controllers in high altitude air route traffic control centers all the way down to Georgia. I'll explain it in real time once we're airborne. But let's just take in some of the sights up here for a few moments before I head down. This is a very impressive observation deck. For now, I'm going to head down one level to get something to eat because meal service on my flight in the first class cabin is going to be light today. All right, I've got a little bit of time in my hands and I've actually found a nice place to sit before my flight. I'm in the restaurant, which is one level up from the boarding gate area. The restaurant provides a nice view of the gate area below, and I enjoyed the food I had there. There were plenty of selections, and the food came out really quick. Yeah. 
Well, that was a very good meal. I am now gonna head on downstairs to TSA. The CRJ 900 that I'm about to board today is inbound from Atlanta. So it's starting off in Atlanta, coming up to White Plains, and I'm gonna take it down back to Atlanta. It's now back down to the level I entered the terminal on to go through TSA. All right, I just completed TSA that took about one minute and now I am on the air side. If you want to eat after TSA, there's a food mark with ample food selections as well as a seating area, but I prefer the full service restaurant above. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of shopping before my flight. I always like to stock up in case I get hungry at 35,000 feet. The CRJ 900 that I'll be flying on today is a teenager. It just turned 13 years old. That window up there behind me is the observation deck that I just came from. If you're flying out of this airport, I highly recommend that you wait in the observation deck upstairs. There's a lot more space. It can get quite crowded down here at the gate area. I actually thought that the door for boarding was here by the Delta signage, but it was actually on the other side of the waiting area, so I made my way across to the other side. There was already a line of passengers in queue waiting to board, so I took a position at the end of the line and waited until the first class boarding zone was called for boarding. Before I get on this plane, I've got a question for you. Are you a subscriber to my channel? If not, you're missing out on getting alerts when I post videos like this. Highly detailed, unique perspectives on aviation is what this channel is all about. So I invite you to click on the subscribe button below. All right, it is now time to board the CRJ 900. I just scanned my boarding pass at the gate in the kind of crowded gate area, and now I'm walking to the aircraft. I'm excited about this flight today. Even though this is a small terminal, the building utilizes jet bridges for boarding. I prefer boarding regional jets by air stairs, but the Northeast has cold winters and hot summers, so this method protects passengers from the elements. I really like flying on the CRJ 900. I've got another video on my channel about the CRJ 900 that I posted on June 28th, 2021 from Minneapolis, Minnesota to Minot, North Dakota. That's quite a different route than today's flight. I'm working my way over to row four in first class now. First class seating is in a one by two configuration, but unfortunately, all four single seats were occupied at the time of booking, so I'll have a seat mate today. Okay. Welcome aboard the CRJ 900. I purposely chose row four because the window is very well aligned with this row. But for now, I'm going to focus on what's going on in the cockpit and the flight deck's relationship with ATC, or air traffic control. In the cockpit, the pilots have tuned their radios to ATIS, or Automatic Terminal Information Service, to receive recorded information about airport conditions, runway information, and more. Let's listen into what the pilots are listening to now. Westchester County Airport Arrival Slash Departure Information November 1756 Zulu. Wind 360 at 11. Visibility 10. Ceiling 4,600 broken. Temperature 17.2.6. Altimeter 3008. Sound visual approach. Runway 34 in use. Landing and departing 3429er. Taxiway Charlie run up past closed. Runway 16. Precision approach path indicator out of service. Caution. Birds in vicinity of airport. Read my call runway hold short instruction. Advise on initial contact. You have information November. In the ATIS, we heard the weather conditions and the active runways in use. This update was labeled November, and it's important that pilots note that when they make their initial contact with ground control. The cabin is being prepared for departure, all passengers have taken their seats. Flight attendants are about to conduct the safety demo, and the ground crew is all set to push this CRJ-900 back. So the pilot tunes into the ground control frequency, identifies himself with his call sign, and receipt of having listened to ATIS November. Today, our call sign is Endeavour 5067 because this flight is being operated by Endeavour Air. Ground there, 5067, gate 2, ready to push. We got November. Endeavour 5067, what's just ground? Pushing off approved. Push it off approved there, 5067. Taxiway Alpha is behind us, and the controller saw that Taxiway Alpha was clear of traffic, and she approved our flight to be pushed back onto Taxiway Alpha. 
As we push back, we can see a wing walker off of our right wing, ensuring that we are clear of obstructions. Once we're far enough from the ramp to begin our taxi under our own power, the tow is removed and the pilot advises the controller that we are ready for taxi. Ground and air 5067 is ready to taxi. Air 5067, runway 34, taxi via Alpha, hold short of runway 29. 34 via Alpha, hold short 29 and air 5067. We are told to use taxiway Alpha to get to runway 34, but runway 29 is along the way, and we're asked to hold short of runway 29 before we're allowed to taxi across it. So we work our way on taxiway Alpha up to runway 29. As we approached runway 29, the controller noticed that there was an airplane about to land on runway 29, but it was still two miles out, which allows plenty of space for us to get across the runway. There, 56 7 traffic's two mile final, cross to Nanard Alpha. Cross 29 Alpha there, 567. We'll be ready at the end. Roger, you can contact her at the end. So we quickly crossed the runway. The pilot let the ground controller know that we were ready for takeoff, so the controller told us that once we get to the end, we can switch frequencies to the runway controller, a person who's standing next to the ground controller in the tower. As we near the threshold of our departure runway, runway 34, our CRJ-900 is sandwiched between smaller general aviation aircraft, and we're waiting for the moment that the controller can tell us to go onto the runway. And remember from the ATIS that runway 34 is being used for both arrivals and departures. In the next transmission, you will hear the tower tell the aircraft in front of us to line up, and another aircraft is on approach to runway 29, and another aircraft is also on approach to runway 34, calling the tower. Radio Seven Jules here, West Just tower runway three four, line runway traffic will land runway two nine. Line runway eight zero seven Jules here. Airplane tower jet jet three ninety seven, move on the visual three four. Jet jet three ninety seven, West Just tower square the base turn final, continue runway three four, traffic hold in position. Okay, square the base is jet jet. About a minute later, the aircraft in front of us is then instructed to take off. Ray 07, Julius Sierra, winds 330 at 9 or going 34, clear for takeoff. 34, clear for takeoff, Ray 07, Julius Sierra. And the controller sees that the arrival who called for landing on runway 34 is now four miles out, so we're asked to line up on the runway ahead of that aircraft. There, 56, center, runway 34, line up and wait, traffic, four mile final. 34, line up, wait, 56, 7, we're ready. Okay, thanks. Our pilot said, we'll be ready, and the controller was grateful for that and thanked the pilot. The controller needs to think quickly and issue us takeoff clearance as soon as the plane behind us gets closer. The plane in front of us is airborne now and asked to contact the departure controller. Los Angeles here in the left turn, contact near 120.8. Air here, see ya. And the plane on final approach behind us is warned about our presence. And exit 397, expect the late landing clearance for traffic holding position. Roger, exit 397. Things are getting close, so it's time for the controller to issue us takeoff clearance. Air 56, 7, wind 3309, runway 34, clear for takeoff, traffic 2 mile final. Jet 397, winds uh, 3309, runway 34, clear the land. Clear the land, runway 34, exit jet 397. With traffic behind us just two miles away, we were cleared for takeoff, and that plane behind us was cleared to land. This was a beautifully orchestrated operation. We're accelerating quickly on the 6,549-foot-long runway. We can see the airline terminal with that great observation deck that I spent some time in earlier. As we lift off, we pass by corporate aviation hangar. The trees beyond the airport are all in another state, Connecticut. Our departure procedure has us flying runway heading for a short period of time, but as I saw earlier in the departure procedure paper when I was in the observation tower, at 1,000 feet above sea level, we need to start a left turn to a heading of 295 degrees. Sir, 56 is the left turn, contact New York, once zero point eight. And turn over to departure, take care and there, the controller reminds us of the left turn as he asks us to contact departure control. From this point, I'll explain what's going on. We're asked by the departure controller, who's located in Garden City, New York, to continue the climb to altitudes that do not interfere with other aircraft in the area. The goal is to bring us to our initial departure fix out of the New York metropolitan area. 
As I mentioned earlier, that fix is called Lana, located in Everettstown, New Jersey in Hunterdon County. Basically, that is one of the most important pieces of information for the controller to know, and it's on our flight plan. Getting us safely to Lana is what is of high importance. It's not relevant to the controller to know that our destination is Atlanta, it's just relevant for him to provide us with headings and altitudes to get to Lana. But it's not that easy because other departures from other airports may also be going to Lana. There was actually a flight that took off right before us from Newark that also happened to be going to Atlanta and Lana was that flight's initial fix. So we needed to be spaced appropriately so that we would not get too close to that flight. And it's not just Westchester and Newark departures that use Lana. Flights from other airports in the New York area that have destinations towards the southeast, such as New Orleans, will also use Lana as a gateway to their high altitude phase of flight. So much attention needs to be placed on assigning the correct altitude to flights. Check out this Delta 757 from Seattle above us on an arrival procedure to JFK called the Lendy 6 Arrival. This plane was at 19,000 feet, so we can't climb higher than that until we're clear of that plane's flight path. If you want to see what that approach to JFK is like, check out my video called Spectacular Approach to JFK Airport. It's the most popular video on my channel, and the video features some awesome views of Manhattan. As we climb higher toward Lana, the departure controller is handing us over to the New York Air Route Traffic Control Center as meal service is about to begin. It's a quick flight down to Atlanta and service is basic in the first class cabin, but I had enough to eat at the restaurant at the airport today and I'm more interested in what's going on outside, like this great view of Shenandoah Airport. But what got me the most excited en route today was this Air Canada A319 flying from Fort Lauderdale to Toronto just below us. What a thrilling moment at 36,000 feet. As we got closer to Atlanta, we passed by the Asheville Airport. We're approaching the Atlanta Airport from the Northeast following an arrival procedure called the Aussie One Arrival. Today, we will be landing on runway 26 right, which has a western heading, so our descent to the runway will be rather simple today. We continue southwest like we have been doing for the majority of the flight, then we'll turn right to the west to land on the runway. Starting on down to Atlanta. As we descend, we pass by the Habersham Airport. That's followed by the Lee Gilmer Memorial Airport in Gainesville. We're getting closer to ATL and are now talking to the approach controller. My seat on the right offers a stunning view of Stone Mountain, which is only 16 miles east of the city of Atlanta. From there, we turned to the right to line up at the runway with no delays at all because traffic was very light and the approach controller, who has been handling our turns to the final approach course, has instructed us to contact the control tower at ATL. Good evening, Tower Endeavor 5067, join you, visual 26 right. Endeavor 5067, runway 26 right, clear to land. Clear to land, 26 right, Endeavor 5067. From here, it's straight on in to runway 26 right, the northernmost runway in Atlanta. The runway is part of a set of runways on the north side, runway 26 right and 26 left. Runway 26 left is being used for departures today. There are three runways that are south of the terminals, and they're being used almost like a separate airport with their own departure and arrival runways. Unlike HPN, what's great about this airport is that none of the runways intersect. They're all aligned in the same direction, making for a very efficient operation. In the distance, you can see the city of Atlanta, Georgia, the state's capital with around half a million people. And we're about to land at Delta's capital, the Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, where Delta Airlines houses its largest base. Runway 26 right is 9,000 feet long. We're on a regional jet and 9,000 feet is more than enough to stop this plane. We clear the runway as quickly as possible, then receive an instruction from the tower controller to cross the parallel runway, runway 26 left. Airbus 67 at Bravo 4, cross 26 left when echo contact ground point niner. 
Cross 26 left, Bravo 4, Echo, Ground Point 9, and there 5067. Good one. Yep. There's actually a taxiway that goes around this runway, so arriving flights don't have to cross this departure runway, but traffic is so light today that it just makes sense to cross it. Once we cross this runway, we contact the ground controller. Ground and air 5067, join Echo for 4. And air 5067, on ground, taxi to Echo to 4. Echo to 4 and air 5067. Our pilot let the controller know that we're going to be pulling into ramp number 4 to get to the D gates, and specifically gate D34. Once on the ramp, the ground crew ensures that we remain clear of obstructions as we approach the gate. Our flight is now complete. Thank you. You're welcome. Alright, I am now off of the CRJ-900. Had a great flight from Westchester County Airport to Atlanta. Delta really works these airplanes. This aircraft is now going to Shreveport. The aircraft actually started its day in Montreal, Canada. Flew down to Atlanta, up to Westchester County. It's now back in Atlanta. And the ground crew is now preparing the flight for its next flight to Shreveport. It's a lot of flying. So overall, I had a fantastic experience flying from Westchester County Airport to here in Atlanta. Westchester County Airport is a very small airport, but there are a lot of flights departing at the time that I was leaving, so it was actually pretty crowded. But now, I am in the busiest airport in the United States. It's actually not that crowded where I am right now because I'm in one of the connectors between the two concourses, but this airport gets really busy at times. Well, I really hope you enjoyed the video. I keep trying to find different flights for your viewing pleasure. I really hope you enjoyed flying with me. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already and hit that bell button so that you're alerted as to every time I post a new video for you. Thanks so much, everybody.